Hey, Swiggity Swaggle, Butter That Bagel, welcome to True Food Reviews. Um, I'm Mark. I'm Nick. And uh, hat game strong, peep that swag. We are really stepping it up here at uh, TFR, and um, hopefully you are too at home. I don't know what that means. Today we're looking at a little friend, hope that's in focus, the dancing bag of Brussels sprouts. Okay, here's some fun facts. For those of you who don't know, there are more than 110 varieties of Brussels sprouts. Okay. I imagine they're they all extreme. all look the same. All I mean, similar, I that, that may sound racist, but... Heaviest, heavy, sproutest. The heaviest Brussels sprout ever. Guess how many pounds? Five? Eighteen. Oh. That's a, that's a, that's a toddler and a half. Um... The surface area of the United Kingdom covered by Brussels sprouts fields is equal to 3,240 football fields. Yeah, yeah, okay. I guess that, it's not, at first, that's a bit of a convoluted number. I don't know. It's not that impactful. Because I imagine each me. field of Brussels sprouts is actually bigger than a football field anyways. Yeah, I'm not, so that's I'm maybe, not sold on that's that. That's what, maybe 1,500 fields? Anyways, adventurer Stuart Kettle, at 49 years of age, rolled a Brussels sprout to the top of Mount Snowden using only his nose to raise money for Macmillan Cancer Support. Right on. Cool. And guess how much the Brussels sprouts industry is worth in euros? 698 million. It's actually 650 million. Wow, that's pretty good. Were you being facetious and making that? No, that really was like high? a legitimate guess. Oh, okay. I, was, I well, thought that was about Nick right. Nick knows his sprouts. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna grab like one or two. I'll just start with one here. Yeah. Right. Um, at first glance, it's a little more elongated than I kind of have seen in the uh, on TV and stuff. In the commercials, usually they're really round and small. Yeah. But um, I, I don't imagine that would affect the flavor very much. No, I don't. Um, I don't see it. What are you most excited for and least excited for about this Brussels sprout? Um, I'm most excited to see whether it retains its moisture or not. If mm -hmm. it if it's bone dry, then it's going to be a problem. But if it actually has some of its moisture, kind of like dried cauli uh, cauliflower we looked at before, then I think it'll be all right. Well, to me, it looks like a little tiny cabbage or a little tiny romaine heart. So I'm just wondering if it's going to be bitter. But I'm excited uh, for its crunchiness because it's really firm. So I imagine I'm going to get like a nice solid like crunch out of this. All right, let's give all it a right, shot. Let's get into it. This shouldn't be surprising, but for me, it's remarkably like cabbage. It's just like a, a smaller version of cabbage, which is funny because growing up, I ate Brussels sprouts all the time, but I wouldn't think of cabbage as something I ate. But having done both of these episodes now, it's it's crazy how much it's like cabbage. And the way you peel it back, it really is. It's like a tiny, like if you were making a stop motion animated film about say, a mouse who befriends a fox and he invites him over for dinner, I could see that you would use this as a prop for the cabbage. Oh yeah, for sure. The one thing it doesn't have is that cabbage stink. That was a problem last time. That little tooth bum smell, right? Yeah, this is... But if you take off one little leaf, it's almost the same texture. Yeah. Hmm. Because the smell isn't there, it's not linking up with the taste. So this, I'm having a better experience than I did when we than when we experimented with cabbage. I think I'm too. It's not as hard, not as hard to get into. It's a little no. more accessible. It's definitely, it's definitely handheld. If you think of a cabbage as a television, this is sort of like a like a mobile phone. It's right in the palm of your hand. Anything, any, any entertainment or excitement you want to get out of it, it's right there at your fingertips, which I think is nice. I could see throwing a few of these in my pocket for the subway. For, the re for that reason, I think it's good for kids, obviously. Um, easy to hold. Like, those cabbages, if you recall, were very heavy. Well, you think of your grandpa's clunky old um, television set. And um, now you look at how streamlined everything is with the iPad and other tablet computers. So It's a I very could, modern vegetable in that way. I could really see this being a hit with the millennials. No. Um, hmm. Now, one thing that I've been thinking about lately... Um, sort of ruminating on is that it's not until you eat a vegetable raw that you realize they're not inherently salty but the way we eat vegetables I think as a society is with butter, salt, pepper and other things like that 
So when you eat it plain, you realize that there's not necessarily a lot to it. You, but you maybe need that salt to bring out the flavor. Yeah, I don't think anyone is crazy about this plane. Um, but you know what? I don't think eating this raw is any more outrageous than eating cauliflower or broccoli or something raw. You could have these and you could have them in dip. It would it would work. People would look at you funny if you serve that at a dinner party or something. But no, I could work. I've never seen this on a display or um, um, a platter. Um, but I now I know, like in the future, if I see if I see a little Brussels sprout sitting there, I might go, oh hey, try it with some ranch. Yeah, ranch would be good for this. So I don't know, I think this is it's familiar. It's fairly nondescript. I think the we don't need to elaborate too much on it. I think it, we can just deliver hmm. the grades. The last one I got had a bit of a not bitter, but it was like a very strong flavor right in the center, I think near the root. Was it a, a pale one? Because I thought I found the pale one was I think it was this one right here as I got down near the bottom where it's really condensed as far as the cluster of leaves go. But um so you ready to grade it? Yeah, I'm gonna give these uh there is a bit more at the place. I'm gonna give these little, you know, elongated shrub mini miniature thing of bobs uh, a b minus it's fine it's probably better than you at, at home are expecting but at the same token there's a lot of produce out there and i wouldn't be reaching for this first do you remember what grade we gave the cabbage for me i think it was something in the c in the c range i believe we both gave it something in the in the area of the c and i think that was partly to do with the uh the odor yeah and with the with the Brussels sprout, you don't have that pee pee poo poo bum bum smell, which I think is what brought it down for me with the cabbage. But this, like I said, this is I think this is a pocket snack right here. And you could roll a few of these up in a in a in a, in a uh, paper towel and just kind of put them in your coat and uh, take them for a ride. So I think I'll give it like a B minus. That's fair. Again, dip. I I want to start seeing this on the platter. I want this to be like a player. I want this to be a contender up against the broccoli and the carrots. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in to True Food Reviews again. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed the new hats. And uh, next time you're putting out some dip with some raw vegetables, give some thought to making a radical move and putting That's all we ask. out Just there. give them a chance. Just give them a chance. Just, yeah, you don't have to do it, but make sure you give it some thought. So we'll see you next time. Have a good one.